My name is Ross Sinters, and I'm one of a group of graduate students at the Center for Space Resources at the Colorado School of Mines. We'd like to share with you a concept and a vision that we're working on. The dream of space resources is to break the limits to terrestrial growth and settle the solar system. But the resources required to do that are immense. How do we get there? We believe that the fastest way to scale the space resource economy is to develop a solution to Earth's biggest problem, climate change. The planetary sunshade is a thin film megastructure at Sun Earth Lagrange 1, and it stops global warming by blocking a small percentage of solar radiation. The concept has been lying around for a while, most notably worked on by Colin McInnes at the University of Glasgow and Roger Angel at the University of Arizona, but only as a thought experiment, not as a serious thing that you'd actually build. But the world has changed, and we think it's time to take it seriously. To do that, you have to take our three priors seriously. First, climate change is an existential threat, and governments will spend to solve it. Second, space resource utilizations can scale rapidly with enough funding and launch capacity. Third, SpaceX's Starship and other reusable heavy launch vehicles design goals will be met. We're going to walk through each one of those, and I hope you come away thinking that we might be right. Look closely at this globe. There's something different. It's a world without ice. Our consumption of fossil fuels is still increasing. Optimistic scenarios have us quitting in 30 years, and we're not even prepared to think about pessimistic scenarios. But even in the United States government, the Department of Defense takes climate change very seriously because climate wars are already here. The Syrian civil war ignited because of a climate-related drought. And as with all consequences of climate change, the worst is yet to come. I live in the American Northwest. This summer, several towns near my home that I know were completely destroyed by climate-related wildfires. Their smoke blotted out the sun. I breathed it. In each year, the fires here are worse than the last. If you don't have stories like this yet, they're in your future. And people fear for their homes and for their way of life, for their countries, for their children. Climate change is not abstract anymore, and it's escalating. So we're going to have to talk about geoengineering. It's time to start the conversation. The Sierra Club, the world's oldest environmental organization, already has a policy. And this is a tragedy, but we have an obligation to rise to it. And the space resources community can be part of the solution. The planetary sunshade is the platonic ideal of solar geoengineering. It evenly shades the Earth, stopping global warming by canceling the radiative forcing from greenhouse gases. It's built from space resources, brought to Sun-Earth Lagrange 1, where it remains stationary in our sky relative to the sun. It keeps station with solar radiation pressure. On the right, you can see L1 approximately to scale with the Earth-Moon system, a million and a half kilometers away. On the left is a formation of six sunshades, viewed against the transit of Venus, which has the same apparent size. Each sunshade is gigantic, 450 kilometers across. How many we'll need depends on our future emissions and whether we want to slow, stop, or reverse global warming. We'll probably need between five and 20 of them, orbiting as a sunshade archipelago. If this solution seems crazy, remember that we managed to create the problem that requires this solution. Because there's no other way to evenly shade the Earth without further messing up our atmosphere and ecosystems. The sunshade is also fully reversible, and it's not fast or cheap, but it offers a utopian off-ramp for technologies that are fast, cheap, and dirty. And that's why we should develop the concept alongside our capabilities, so it becomes a credible idea for a geoengineered world. There are fringe benefits. It would be a shame to block all that sunlight without capturing the energy. We'll make it from thin film photovoltaics. This is an island on the left in the Sunshade Archipelago. It's made of 169 reasonably sized hexes, each 20 kilometers on a side. Each hex generates 200 gigawatts. The island generates 35 terawatts, twice today's total global energy supply. The first hexes could be made in geo alongside space solar power stations. They could be attached to factory ships and flown to L1 and used to process raw material launched from the moon. Or they could be used to capture sunward asteroids, redirecting them to L1 for processing. Either way, to get this thing built, you need to use the first building blocks to make more, harnessing exponential growth. In doing all this, you also build a civil civilization altering industrial capacity out at the edge of Earth's gravity well. It would put us on the Kardashev scale. Because the architecture has to build itself, and it's also a factory, the fringe benefit to saving our client, climate is that you get to build a space megastructure that makes space megastructures. If we can build this, human expansion throughout the solar system becomes easy. It's a worthy vision, and every step towards its construction builds the space resource economy. 
and it is the space resource economy that will make the planetary sunshade possible. The sunshade will not be made of unobtainium, but of aluminum, silicon, even iron. It'll require tens, hundreds of megatons in deep space, sourced from lunar and asteroidal resources. It'll require incredible amounts of repellent, sourced from lunar water, that we believe to be abundant. The technology is in prospecting, mining, and processing these materials. This is exactly what the space resources community is working on. The Planetary Sunshade is a mega project that supports the entire cislunar economy. Everything that we hope to build fits into it because it is a giant demand driver for space resources of all types. So what we are doing is the technology maturation project. There's no magic in this. It doesn't require self-replicating nanobots. It requires a real industrial base in space. Humans build things this large all the time. Three Gorges Dam masses 68 megatons. And working in space could be easier than working on Earth if we can get the infrastructure up there to bootstrap. We are all dreamers, and no one has successfully utilized space resources, but we are all determined to do so. And we're rightly focused on taking the first steps. My own funded research is on powering rovers prospecting for lunar water, and I've got a talk later about that I'd love for you to see. But in this scope, consider SpaceX, the most impressive space technology maturation program since Apollo. It is driven by a vision of a city on Mars. That vision fuels their work and is proudly shared. It is their North Star, and it keeps them innovating when narrow market considerations would discourage it. We should all be so bold in our work. Which brings us to the third thing we have to take seriously. We believe that Starship will meet its design goals. Timeline, no, but performance, yes. We'll have prospecting rovers on the moon before Starship gets there, but at a certain point, SpaceX is gonna start landing 100 ton payloads. And other companies will too. We should be ready for that, ready to utilize the capacity. Because SpaceX is building that Starfleet, but what are they gonna do with it between Mars launch windows? This is the logistical research resource that could build a railroad to the moon. Scaling comes from improvement and improvement comes from iteration. We see a world in which you can just fly something to space and try it, or bring your engineering team to the moon and work the problem on site. Humans and robots working together with fabrication, repair facilities, and other centralized infrastructure will make the lunar poles a fast technology and resource development site. The moon becomes a factory, a mine, and a gas station. Everything we need to build a sunshade is on the moon, and we can get it to L1 for 2.8 kilometers a second. Progress in space has been slow. With a railroad to the moon, that would change. What happened to the O'Neillian dream of millions of people living and working in space? Some are working on it, slowly and ferociously. But the planetary sunshade could be a credible technical and economic driver, marshalling civilizational resources toward that goal. Because space resource utilization requires not just resources and technology, but a customer. The resources to build a planetary sunshade are abundant on the moon and on near-Earth asteroids. The space resource community is developing the foundational technologies. The limit to the scope of our vision is really the customer, and there is no bigger problem than climate change, which affects all of humanity. There's no good terrestrial solution short of slowly removing all that carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it back in the ground. From a marketing perspective, the planetary sunshade is the biggest possible product that space resources could offer. Nothing else could deliver as much value to Earth. Unlocking that value seems hard right now, but we've learned to live in a world where governments do not act on climate. The future will not look like the past. This is the future. Have a closer look at these protesters. They're children. Their generation is radicalized and they are morally justified. Our legacy to them is a destabilized and dangerous climate and they will outlive us. But before that, they will dominate the electorate. Governments are ultimately accountable to their people. They will act or they will be replaced the governments that will act. So the climate change is an existential threat to governments as well. What we can do now is push for the right space policy developments and international collaborations to bring political will for climate action to bear on making space resource development part of the solution. We went ahead and asked a thousand people if they'd rather support a city on Mars or a space-based solution to climate change. The answer is a space-based solution to climate change with a supermajority. They say that we don't build cathedrals anymore, but in an era of perpetual change, we still do. This is Sagrada Familia, started in 1882. It's still under construction today. The original architect, Anthony Gaudí, died 90 years ago. The planetary sunshade is a cathedral for the Anthropocene. It holds Earth under sanctuary in atonement to our children. And it promises to them the stars. <laughs>